Good morning students. Welcome to my video lecture on module 1, Tutorial and Case Studies. We have already seen various aspects of evolution of composite materials in module 1. Now we'll look into some tutorial problems and case studies. This is a part of a postgraduate course, Fabrication and Processing of Advanced Composites, ME61011. I am Nilanjan Das Chakladar of Mechanical Engineering Department, IIG Kharagpur. Now in this talk, we'll discuss two tutorial problems and two case studies. Tutorial 1. So what are stiffness, strength, modulus and stress? So these are some terminologies which we often confuse between their definitions. So let us look at look into this plot. So it is a force versus deflection or deformation. That means we are applying a deflection or we are applying a deformation and we are measuring the force okay the reverse is also possible now in this case if we try to plot force against deflection or deformation what we get we may get the orange line some sort of trend where it increases then there is a non-linearity then gradually it fails now the initial slope which is also called the initial tangent modulus if force was replaced by stress and deflection was replaced by strain then this the same slope will be called as the initial tangent modulus now in this case this is not modulus this is the slope between the change of force with per unit change of deformation that is del force by del deformation we call it as s or the slope and here I have made an arrow from this end it's actually the material fails but this is a force deflection plot or force deformation plot so we will not get the ultimate strength in this plot what we may get is the force corresponding to the ultimate strength now coming to some basic relations of force deformation and slope so if it's a tensile force yeah, against tensile deformation you get tensile stiffness which is the slope for shear you get shear stiffness for bending moment you get flexural stiffness so it can be a plot between moment and curvature it can be a plot between the load due to the bending against the deflection due to the bending now if force is replaced with stress if it's initial uh, force divided by initial cross-sectional area so that gives you the engineering stress if it's divided by the instantaneous cross-sectional area it that gives you the true uh, stress so similarly true stress true strain if deformation is replaced by strain then only you get the term modulus okay now modulus has a physical significance what is the physical significance of modulus physical significance is it is the resistance to deformation okay so modulus in physical terms it is the resistance to deformation now if it's a tensile deformation then the resistance would be tensile and we call it tensile modulus similarly shear modulus flexural modulus now stress at the onset of failure that is called as the ultimate strength now what failure is it or what stress were, are we talking about if the load is tensile it is the ultimate tensile strength if the load is shear it is the ultimate shear strength if the load is flexural it's, if it's due to a bending moment or a bending load then it becomes an ultimate flexural strength coming to tutorial 2 now you see this structure so obviously I'm not expecting you to memorize the structure but just see some sort of symmetry is there available in the structure this is a typical high impact polystyrene okay which is also abbreviated as HIP so this high impact polystyrene if these are the characteristics then can you guess its application so what would be the application if the characteristics of such a polymer are high impact low cost easy paint and glue so it's easy to paint and glue can withstand small variations of temperature can be used to protect precision products that means it is used for some kind of cover some kind of protection some kind of uh, materials which are required for casing so a common example is 
a CD case. Okay. Now let's look into a case study. You are provided with two unidirectional fiber composite specimens. Now we have not gone much detail of unidirectional fiber composites uh, for composites, but we know what unidirectional fiber means. So in simple terms, if this is a specimen, then these are all the unidirectional fibers. Okay. And these two specimens, they have the same fiber volume fraction. Also, we have not discussed much about fiber volume fraction, but from the term we can say, so it is a fraction which is expressed in terms of volume and the content of fiber in that volume is same. That means if I am talking about this composite has a 60% fiber and 40% matrix, it is the same for both the specimens. Then for specimen 1, all the fibers are intact and of same length, makes sense. Specimen 2, 80% of the fibers are intact and rest are broken. So something is happening here, right? The rest of the fibers are broken. Now you have applied a load of 20 kilo in a cantilever posture for 10 minutes. So what is a cantilever posture? Similar and simple. We need, we know. So this is an F. If this is the specimen and we are just applying a load okay it can be a distributed load it can be a concentrated load we are applying a load of 20 kilo for 10 minutes okay after five minutes 20 percent of the fibers of specimen broke so that means after five minutes again 80 percent of the specimen 80 percent of the fibers in specimen one is intact what will be the load distribution after 5 minutes of operation? Now, if you remember, we discussed in module 1 that even if the fibers are broken, the load is transferred or shared by the unfractured fibers. That means, if we look into the time point after 5 minutes, so we have 80% intact of specimen 2 and since 20% has already been broken the remaining 80% of specimen 1 is now intact that is after 5 minutes in both the cases the load will be shared by 80% but it assumes that even in specimen 2 there are no fracture of fibers in the intact region. Now coming to case study 2. You had a toothache, you visited a dentist and the doctor recommends to go for a surgery. On the day of surgery you realize that the doctor is not going to uproot your tooth but add something in its cavity. The assistant assured you not to worry as it is just a filling made of composite. A filling made of composite. You read about unidirectional composite and were startled. So uh, are they going to actually put some unidirectional composite on my tooth? So what do you think the assistant meant when he or she mentioned dental filling of composites? Now these dental filling of composites are made of not fibers but fillers. So fibers, they are long fillers, they are chopped fibers, okay? So these chopped fibers in very minute, minute dimensions, they are mixed with the dental resin, okay? These dental resin, when they are reinforced with these fillers, they increase the strength of the cavity. Now, if you have ever gone for a tooth filling, after this filling is done, you are asked not to chew anything, you are asked not to uh, eat anything um, solid, you can drink water. Why? 
because you allow this resin this reinforced resin to cure to cure in ambient conditions so that is what meant by the dental filling of composite it is not unidirectional composite thank you for watching my video hope you have enjoyed it please add my playlist video lectures of fpac me61011 and subscribe to my channel do not forget to read the description below thank you